Howdy, welcome back to Zooter 5, my Janus and Jim Bobs. Currently, we cannot go any further into the Forest Temple because we are out of keys. But fortunately, we have a lot of money. But unfortunately, a lot of money cannot buy us progression in a Zooter. Zooter 5 is not pay to win. And that is one of the reasons I love Zooter 5. I feel like pay to win games are one of the worst things to ever exist in the gaming market. The concept that you can spend money in real life to give yourself an advantage in a video game just doesn't make sense. Even though it kind of exists in a lot of sports and stuff, because you can buy better equipment in sports and have slight advantages. Like in tennis, you could buy a better tennis racket and then do better because you have that better tennis racket. In many ways, life is pay to win. But that's one of the things that's great about video games is that we get to escape some of those realities and get into a position where it comes down to skill and not what's in your bank account. Now, there's this game I played recently called, called Clash Royale. It's like a competitive version of Clash of Clans where you send enemies back and forth at each other and try to take over each other's tower. And it's a fun game in concept. I enjoy it and played it a little bit, but then once I realized that to have any sort of real competitive advantage, you had to spend real money, I, it completely takes away any purpose of playing the game at that point. Now some people hear that and they're like, okay, I guess I gotta pull out my wallet and spend $300 to give myself all these advantages so I can be the best at this game. But I see that and I think, wow, why would anybody want to play this game where you have to spend all this money to do well when there's hundreds and thousands of better games out there that don't require that but some people see those microtransaction pay to win options and they're they they do it they actually straight up do it like plants for zombies 2 is a really fun game but one of the issues with plants for zombies 2 is if a level is too difficult you can literally pay for like electric zapping and you can just zap every single zombie on the fields and at that point like what's the point of playing the game anymore if there's an option where you can just spend real life money to kill every single enemy without having to learn to play the game better or initiate some sort of strategy yeah that's how i feel <laughs> i think lots of people agree with me on this too i don't think is there anybody who disagrees with my concept? Is there anybody watching this video that prefers games that have pay-to-win options? Are there any rich viewers right now that just love stepping on all of the peasants and <laughs> asserting their authority? I'm sure there is a few of them out there. Okay, so what we're going to try to do is a lot of people told me that you can get through this room without iron boots, which I have never done in my lifetime. But... We're gonna figure it out because we have one key for shadow temple and there's not much more we can do we have two keys for fire temple so that's where i'm gonna go next after this okay this fan doesn't even blow you until you cross so we're i was just impatient last time yeah once that fan stops we can continue moving on with our lives Let's not get too ambitious at this point. We gotta just take it slow. Oh no. The eyeball, it saw me. Oh, and it totally missed. No, no, oh, oh, dang it. I thought it was done. It's kind of hard to tell when the wind stops. Oh, it can re... I did not realize that fire could boomerang back to us. Is there any other fire homing attacks in this whole entire game apart from that one eyeball? I can't think of another example. Dude, L targeting this face in the wall is causing me to mess up my redead attacks. Thankfully, the Bigoron sword has that extendo reach. Okay. Here, I can hear the spirits whispering in this room. Those who have sacred feet should let the wind guide them. My feet are sacred. Okay, Link is starting that website where you can buy his feet picks. He is offering fantastic opportunities to buy pictures of his sacred feet. 
and he knows you guys are gonna spend money on that. He knows. Whoa. Well, fortunately, we don't need a key to go further here. We do need a key for this room, but this is the perfect distance for us to make it because the next room we get to unlock a shortcut. We won't have to backtrack through the temple at all. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're getting lots of water temple keys. Now, if we could just find the iron boots, that would be everything to us. You caused me to miss my pot. I just want to see what was inside the pot. It was a recovery heart. Oh, wait, stop. <laughs> That's the gold skull to the toad. We're at 68 now? How am I forgetting to mark so, so many of these tokens on the tracker? I mean, it's not like it matters. They're not going to do anything for us. What is that? <gasps> gold gauntlets? <laughs> Very nice. That's going to allow us to visit the fairy outside of Ganon's castle as an adult. And I had so many comments remind me that I did not get the fairy fountain outside of Hyrule Castle as a kid. You know, I just wasn't paying close attention. Iron boots! We finally found them! Oh, that's so funny. I was kind of waiting until I got the iron boots before I went through that room because I thought you needed the iron boots for it. Little did I know the iron boots were a reward for going through the room without the iron boots. Good thing we came back. If it wasn't for my comment section hounding me to go back and do it, I would have probably waited even longer to do so. But we pushed through and now we have the iron boots and the gold gauntlets, like back to back. Didn't even mark the gold gauntlets. Now I did. Okay, so with iron boots, we can go inside Water Temple. We can get all 18 checks at the bottom of the Zora Fountain as an adult. There's a lot of checks down there. We can get the prize in that one grotto where the Tektite is in Hyrule Field, which I think was just a rupee. Can I get Pierre from here? Does it reach that far? I'm not sure how good Scarecrow's hearing is. Scarecrows have great hearing. Is that Din's fire up there too? And that's a bomb shoe. What am I thinking? Can I not recognize a bomb shoe when I see one? There it is, the 69th skull to the token. That means we have to 69 with a skull skull to the right here. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Is there anything I can spend my rupees on? I could go buy a 500 rupee water tunic from one of the shops, but I hate buying the tunics. I prefer having the randomizer choose when it wants to give us a tunic. It's a bit more fun that way. Time to go on a fairy ride. Not like a great fairy ride though. That's an entirely different thing. If you want to ride a great fairy, all you gotta do is bring a little bit of Moscato and the fairy is super happy to provide a good time. Also, I'm looking at my tracker and realized I already have Din's Fire. And now I'm double realizing you have to have Din's Fire to come into Shadow Temple. So why did I think I saw Din's Fire earlier by that scarecrow? Typical example of me speaking before thinking. That happens a lot on a recording. And I still leave it in. I could edit it out, my stupidity. It was taking forever. There he goes. All right, into the large room. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here. We got a pot. I don't want stuff to fall underground. I knew that was going to be a fool because we already have the Ocarina of Time. But I don't mind getting frozen that much. Is this door locked over here? It isn't. Hmm. We have a skull to the token up there. I think some silver rupees up at the top here. Let's go get those first. Did we also reach that through Scarecrow Song? I'm double questioning, do we have the boss key for Shadow Temple? It's probably not going to be Bongo Bongo since we have boss randomizer on. Hmm. But we totally can do that. We do have the boss key. Ooh. 
There's a lot of different stuff around here. Did we do it? Dang it! We're frozen twice in the same room. I'm a Link Ice Pop. Arrows. Oh, is this a Song of Time block appearance? Because some of this stuff I never do. I don't think I've ever made the Song of Time block appear. So you really don't need to. Isn't this typically just like a recovery heart up here? Or like a blue rupee or something? Yes. We no longer have the sacred number. Quadson gets a little bit upset when we have 69 tokens. He considers that unfavorable. But it's okay. We have cleansed our sins. Come on, grab onto his armpit. Aha! Silver rupee for the forest trial in Ganon's castle. If we can ever enter Ganon's castle, that is. <sighs> do I unlock this door? I'm gonna do it. Oh wait. Oh, we already used our key. Duh. I totally forgot we did. Okay, never mind. We're not going to fight Bongo Bongo or one of his homies. Do you think the bosses in Ocarina of Time are friends? Do you think they ever go and just hang out with each other and just share stories and open up, share their emotions? Or do you think they always stay isolated? It's probably why they become such bad evil bosses is they're always in isolation. And they have nobody to talk about their lives and feelings with, so they're always just stuck dealing with that stuff themselves instead of having healthy outlets. Isolation could be a dark, dark thing. Nuts. You know, nothing like a little bit of nut comedy to offset the discussion of a dark topic. Or as Dense Fire would like to call it, a hot topic. Time for the fancy chest. Green rupee. Do so now we can do water temple. Do I do that next? Probably. That's where the most stuff is, I would imagine. But let's continue getting the rest of the checks in Shadow Temple while we're here, obviously. And while we're doing so, let's talk about the comic question of the day from a couple episodes ago, where I asked you guys what you thought of gene and DNA modification and CRISPR technology that is going to allow us to alter our DNA as humans. And there's some really smart people in the comment section, so we got some really in-depth answers, which was really fun to read. And this is one of the most fun comment questions I think I've asked in a long time, because it's very sci-fi, speculatory. Do another forest trial, Silver Rupee? Okay. So this first commenter said that this technology is a logical step forward for human evolution, but they're worried that it's not going to be accessible for all levels of wealth, leading to discrimination for genes. And yeah, that is definitely going to be a problem. Like almost all technology in this world, the rich get to typically use it first. I mean, that's just kind of what it is. That's how life has always been. Why are, are these not going in? It looked like it was going out the side for a second. It was so strange. I don't think it's possible to offer all technology to everybody at once. It's always going to be like a rich people they're going to have access to first before it gets available for everybody. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. It's like a jackpot room. Is that a double heart container? Oh my lord. Hey, this keys doesn't want us to have anything nice. I'll show you. Damn, that double heart container, though. While it's kind of a sad fact of life, I don't think it's, I don't think there's any possibility for a new groundbreaking technology to come out that rich people aren't going to get to use and utilize first. Well, I would say the only reason rich people would let like poor people use it first is because they want to test out the technologies on people that they might deem as less important or something, you know? They want to test it out on the peasants first. It's like a step above animal testing, you know, you have animal testing, then you test on the poor people, and then you test on the rich, important people. As a person who's poor, I <laughs> would definitely be in the second category. 
But at the same time, if... Well, what was that? Bolero of Fire! Finally! That's a really good teleport right there. But that's just like a whole other conversation topic, you know? <laughs> Wealth and equality, all that stuff. I was about to say fun stuff. Definitely not fun stuff whatsoever. Wealth and equality sucks. Uh, Goron Mask. Seeing the back of this mask is really funny. I feel like you don't typically get to see the strap that holds it onto Link's face. That looks so strange. Hmm. Do we go back to Fire Temple or do we go to Water Temple next? I feel like Water Temple since we have so many keys for it. And I love the Serenade of Water. It's beautiful. This next comment says that DNA modification will be able to cure certain things and diseases, but it's going to lead to other problems down the road. Because a lot of the times when you cure one problem, it just leads to another problem. And while that concept is most likely true, I feel like that's just like kind of part of evolution to a certain degree, right? Like one problem does lead to another, but that's just kind of the train is you got to fix one problem at a time and then fix the new problems as they arise. But I also do understand the concept that we don't want more problems to have to fix. It is kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it? I don't think that's necessarily a reason to not advance into that type of territory, though. Because then we'll just find more solutions to the problems as we fix it and we'll refine and... No, it's all a big, long process. And unfortunately, it's a process that is going to probably cause a lot of suffering, but it's also going to fix a lot of suffering. So it's just, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I think we should start off just by lowering the water. Do I want to break pots before I lower the water? I feel like it'll be easier to come back and break them once it's lowered. I think there's a lot of pots in Water Temple, too. Now, if I could get genetically modified to become a Zora, like a Majora's Mask, I'd be down for that. Being able to swim like a Zora would be amazing. I'd become a fish person. All right, let's lower the water. This comment said that the whole entire thing is less about morality and more about practicality. And that even if they started doing stuff for gene modification and they made it outlawed in the U.S., people would just go to countries with looser laws and they would get their DNA babies from other countries. Or the other concept would be the U.S. or other first world countries or third world countries. Just any country might make it outlawed, but that doesn't prevent another country from allowing it to happen. And then after a couple generations, one country in particular could have an elite lineup of genetically modified humans, giving them a distinct advantage over other countries, in which case other countries would probably start doing it just to stay competitive with the countries that have already started. So the competitive nature of humans would lead to it becoming a, to a practical necessity. And there we go, we have full Deku Stick capacity. And this is all stuff that we probably won't even see in our lifetime, but over the course of human existence will probably be battles and things that people have to deal with, for sure. I feel like Tektites seem like there's something that was genetically modified. Mammal spiders? How else could a mammal spider exist without gene editing? I'm going to need to go talk to the scientist at the lake laboratory and see if he has anything to do with it. Fortunately, we do not need Lens of Truth at all inside the Water Temple. That would make Water Temple even more of a hellscape if that was the case. Although, with fast Iron Boot equipping, Water Temple is not too bad, since we don't have to see the pause screen nearly as much. This commenter had a kind of interesting concept saying that changing things like physical appearance, such as eye color, hair color, stuff like that, is actually less discriminatory than changing characteristics that people already kind of have a wide level of discrimination against, such as like mental issues or 
other like physical disabilities like there's already people in society that have to deal with a lot of bull crap and deeming these traits as fixable would only lead to more levels of discrimination because then people would just argue like oh why don't you go and get this fixed at the hospital or something and it would just lead to more distasteful opinions towards people who are not considered ideal in society which is so true it would lead to a lot of issues <laughs> Light arrows! This episode has suddenly opened up the floodgates and given us so many good things. Hallelujah! Hey. No, sir. Can we push this block in? That's how this worked, right? Yeah. Then we did have some commenters that are all for the idea. They think it's just part of the human species timeline of advancement and that we should start doing these as soon as we're able to and they think it would even be a good idea to start creating some human animal hybrids to give humans better physical characteristics that animals utilize right now i'm not entirely sure how that would work but it makes me think of the book maximum ride which is one of my favorite book series and it's about these kids that were all genetically modified to have angel wings so they can all fly and they all have other ways to make themselves genetically superior but then the scientists are able to create even more superior beings so they decide that these angel kids need to be taken out so they try to send out like i guess practically assassins to take them out so they can get rid of their previous experiments i hope they create a movie or a tv series out of it someday i went to the library yesterday to check out the next two copies of the twilight princess manga because i'm on books four and five now and while checking them out i saw that they had a graphic is it called graphic novel or a manga series for maximum ride which is really cool i'll probably check that out and i feel like if there's a graphic novel version created that means the next step in line is to create it into an actual series Next commenter on the list said that this whole entire discussion reminded them of a really good movie from the 90s called Gattaca, which I ended up doing a bit of research on this movie, and a lot of people were saying that it's a work of art, a masterpiece. And it's one of those like sci-fi movies that doesn't rely much on CGI, just a lot more just practical effects and good storytelling. And I definitely want to watch it at some point. I'm wondering if I could check movies like this out at the library. My library, whenever I check stuff out, it always tells me how much money I saved from checking things out at the library in comparison to buying things. And apparently I've saved over $250 already from just checking stuff out at the library rather than buying it straight up. And that always makes me wonder, how do authors and publicists feel about libraries? Cause like obviously they want their things to be read but does it bother these like publishers and stuff that technically hundreds of people could read it for the price of one person buying it as like a library has anybody else in the comment section seen gattaca okay okay but they think that it would be kind of a really sad dystopian reality when there's a line of people who are able to gain all the opportunity in the world because they're genetically modified. And it would just lead anybody who's not genetically modified in the dust because it would become, it would practically turn these genetic modifications to be a requirement to have full opportunities in life because there's gonna be a lot of people who feel a lot more superior with their beauty intelligence or athleticism to the point where if you're not genetically modified you're just going to be looked down upon which i think that would take a long time for society to get to that point to where we have that many genetically modified people to where you're considered insuperior for not being that way but it's not an impossibility it would mostly just depend on how like affordable it is to roll out this technology also the fact that we have the golden scale kind of doesn't matter since we have iron boots now 
This is the scythe shortcut room. This take tie wants to attack us, but we're invincible when we have collected a random item. Stupid mammal spider. We found really good stuff this episode. Gold gauntlets, gold scale, iron boots, and Bolero of Fire. It's been a really good episode. I was feeling a little bit hopeless at the start, and now we're feeling good again. Let's head back here. Mm, goopy. Gotta think of another comic question for the day. People love comic questions of the day, which I also love asking them because it just leads to so much more discussion in the comment section. And I love reading the comments of the videos because I like our little two clan hive mind that we got going on here. Feels like a pretty wholesome spot of the internet. Today's comic question of the day is going to be if Nintendo remastered Ocarina of Time from the ground up and made it with complete new gen capabilities and all of the features that we know that Zelda games could have included today. What would you want them to change? What would you want them to add, change, update, upgrade? What features from other Zelda games would you want them to add? What areas, dungeons, anything? Go ahead and get as creative as you would like, because I feel like there's so many things that they could do that would make the game even better. Or would you want the game to stay nearly exactly the same, but just have some graphical updates? There's really so much they could do. Oh my God. I even knew you were coming and you scared the heck out of me. Like, I have lots of ideas of things they could remaster, but I want to see what you guys have to say first before I start spouting too much out there. Is there pots in this room? No. No pots in this room. Okay, well, now I know I could have just used Pierre to get up here. Gotta check every room at least one time for the pots. Gotta love how Zeter 5 is having us comb super thoroughly through every single room in section of Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Oh wait, how'd you take my jump attack away? Nobody takes my jump attack away. Yeah. All right, and that being said, I'm gonna catch you all in the next episode of Ocarina of Time Randomizer. Thank you all for watching. Slice that thumbs up button. And I'll see you next time. I've won through all eternity. Yo, I'm fighting getting muscle lucky can and then he re-examine. What? The goddamn landscape, leap for escape, playing taking shape, mouth was a gate. So it's that beater in the throat. Not gonna lie, I'm the goat. When it crosses the mold, I'm loving mode. I'm not gonna choke.